say, it's impossible not to love this movie. Great job on this. Thank you. And everybody's gonna talk about the action. The action scenes are bananas, but the comedy is what really, like, I really love the comedy element in this movie. How, tell me how you infuse that into this story a little bit more. Well, Tom and I were nervous all the time about whether or not there was enough humor in the movie. We have a tendency to go a little bit dark, and so we were trying all the time to find ways to put some sort of humor in the scene. And throughout the movie, we, we really thought we were we were barely going to get there. And yeah. it was only when we put the whole movie together that we realized uh, how much we had actually packed in. Benji, open the door! Open the door! Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, my God! There's an evolution of Ethan's character. But, I mean, can you talk about the evolution of Ethan or Tom on and off screen to to be now 20 years later in this serial to, what's the evolution you've seen? Well, I think the evolution of Ethan, uh, he, he started out as a reluctant hero. He always had one foot out the door in all of the movies. And in Ghost Protocol, it feels like he kind of came full circle and accepted that this was his destiny. And so we wanted to start the movie in that place, that, that he's accepted that this is his family, this is his life, and then all of that is taken away from him. And what does he do when it's, when it's gone? The stunts are, like I said, they're crazy. They look super dangerous. As a director, do you, are you ever just like in fear, like I'm, I'm gonna hurt the beloved Tom Cruise <laughs> in the world? Uh, it, 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 it goes through your mind occasionally. I do not want to be that guy. Uh, but we have an incredible team. They're really, uh, uh, they really know their stuff and they were amazing in terms of safety and in terms of their precautions. And it, it, they give you a lot of confidence. I know you're, you're a great writer as well as a director. In this movie and part of the script, they, they talk about these missing planes. And you know we have Malaysia 370 mm -hmm. that's still missing. Like, do you think that these things are coincidental or like the movie, do you think that there may be something else going on? I, what, what we wanted to do was kind of bring a little bit of the real world in there. It's for people's collective experience to sort of play into the narrative. Uh, but we didn't want to go too far in terms of making the film feel like a like a downer or two. We want you to be able to kind of come and yeah. get away from your problems for two hours. And you do that. And oh, the, you. shooting in Vienna, uh, well, at least I know you shot a lot of places, but Vienna, the opera house and everything. But how did that add to the to the movie? Because just being here, I'm seeing like all this great scenery. Yeah. Uh, when when you, as a palette, were you just like enthused as a director to have all this great stuff? It's a beautiful city, and it's one that that they've scouted a bunch of times on the, on the, on the franchise of previous movies. I think De Palma wanted to shoot here, Tom has scouted here at another point. Uh, and we were just excited to have the opportunity to finally be the one that came. It's, it's just such a gorgeous city. The opera house is beautiful. And, and we wanted to make a movie that took you to all these different places, took you to Vienna, took you to Morocco, took you to London, and, and, and really explore the cities while, while we were there. Let's go on cruise control for a second. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Tom Cruise is, I guess, the world's greatest actor, as it seems. Can you tell us, like, as, as a director, what do you see in, in him as, in the work that he puts into it that, that makes him so special and different from maybe a lot of other actors? Uh, nobody loves making movies more than Tom Cruise. I mean, he really does what he loves, and he loves what he does. Uh, he's, um, He's the hardest working guy I've ever worked with, but also the most generous. And, and it's wonderful to watch him interact with the crew and interact with, with, the, with his fellow cast members. That, that for him, everybody is, everybody's the same on the movie. And all he really wants to do is, uh, is have the audience have the best time they can. You have to have the audience fearful that the mission will not be complete. And everybody's seen like, all of these movies and know how great you know uh, Ethan's gonna do in these characters. What's the challenge of like still making us sit on the, the edge of our seats and, and how uh, do you do that? Story and character. If, if if the story is there, if the characters are there, you really care about them. You'll be invested in the scene every time, and that's that's really the trick of mm -hmm. these movies. It's really not about trying to make the bigger, crazier spectacle every time, but really trying to invest the audience in the stakes of what's on screen. And last question, Rebecca is, is fairly uh, new to audiences. Mm -hmm. And t was, there, was that a, a decision? I know, I know she did well on the script that Tom, he, Tom had to feel this way on, on screen about his introduction kind of coincided. Was it her being like not familiar 
or instead of him working for Gwyneth Paltrow or somebody else, did that play into their relationship and synergy on screen? Yeah, it was really just chemistry. I, I really knew I wanted I wanted there to be a certain spark between those two characters, and uh, and there were there there were a lot of amazing amazing actresses that I met with uh, on this on this role, and it was when I saw Rebecca that I knew who Ilsa was and how to write it. Uh, and as soon as I put the two of them in a room together, I knew that was it. She was the one. It was a work of art. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much.